Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video looking at the V2 rocket, we assumed that even though we were burning fuel, the weight of the rocket and fuel remained constant. Based upon that, we found that the final velocity after 50 seconds of burn was 1400 feet per second, and it maintained a constant acceleration of 28 feet per second squared. But what if we assume now that as the rocket is burning gas, the rocket becomes lighter and lighter, and therefore the velocity will increase more quickly because the acceleration will increase as well. How do we calculate the final velocity and the final acceleration with this new concept that the mass or the weight of the rocket reduces as the time goes on? All right, so what we're going to do is as follows. We're going to start with F net equals mass times acceleration, or the acceleration equals the net force divided by the mass. Now the net force is going to be the thrust of the engines minus the weight of the, of the rocket, so it's going to be equal to 60,000 pounds minus the weight of the rocket. So the weight of the rocket, hmm, well, that's going to be changing over time. That's going to be equal to 32,000 pounds minus the weight, which is, uh, well, let's see here. That would be 12 slugs of fuel burned every single second. How many pounds is that? So we need to multiply uh, the weight of the fuel per second. So the weight of the fuel, the fuel per second, the second is equal to the mass times g, which is 12 slugs times 32. So 12 times 32, which is 384 pounds. So we're burning 384 pounds uh, per, let's see, 384 pounds per second. So that's minus 384 times t. So that's the total force on the rocket is the rocket engines pushing up at 60,000 pounds and from that we have to subtract 32,000 minus 340t uh, which means that the net force on the rocket increases over time because the weight pulling back down decreases over time and then we have to divide that by the mass and the mass well we have to convert the, the weight of the rocket to the mass of the rocket 32,000 pounds equals 1,000 slugs, and that also reduces with time, so that would be 1,000 slugs minus 12 times t, 12 slugs every single second, so that's a mass per unit time, and that is the weight per unit time, and that's subtracted from the force of the engines. Now, in order to simplify that, because that looks kind of a mean equation, actually we can factor out the 32 from the numerator. So we can say that the acceleration is equal to 60,000 minus 32 times, and then we end up with 1,000 minus 12t divided by 1,000 minus 12t. And of course, you can see why we did that. That's kind of obvious because now we can divide the denominator into the numerator, which means our new acceleration will become as follows. Acceleration will now be equal to 60,000 divided by 1,000 minus 12t, and that would then be minus 32. So now notice we have a much simplified equation for the acceleration. Now we can change acceleration. Well, let's see here for a moment. We're trying to find the final acceleration. So let's calculate that now that we have this equation right here. So let's do that real quick. So we can say that acceleration final is equal to acceleration when t equals 50 seconds. So all we have to do is plug in 50 for the t here. So that will be equal to 60,000 divided by 1,000 minus 12 times 50. 1,000 minus 12 times 50, and then subtract minus 32 from that, of course, because acceleration due to gravity. So 12 times 60, that's, uh, uh, that's 600. Subtract from 1,000, that's 400. That's 60,000 divided by 400, which is 150 minus 32. That's 150 minus 32. 32, which is equal to 118 feet per second squared. 
So if we're going to make a little graph of that, it will look like this. So the acceleration as a function of time and probably something like this. We're going to start out with acceleration of 28 feet per second and after 50 seconds we will have reached an acceleration of 118 feet per second. So that's how the acceleration changes over time if we take into account that the rocket is losing mass. So the same force for the engines will accelerate the rocket faster and faster and faster. So that's the final acceleration is 118 feet per second squared. Well, what about final velocity? Well, to do that, we need to change acceleration to dvdt. dvdt is equal to 60,000 divided by 1,000 minus 12t minus 32. And then we can bring the dt over to the other side. And then to find velocity, which is equal to the integral of dv, which is equal to the integral of 60,000 divided by 1,000 minus 12t dt, and then minus 32 times dt. And of course, we could have taken the 60,000 out as well. All right, so let's go ahead and integrate that. So we have velocity is equal to the integral from 0 to 50, from 0 to 50 for the first 50 seconds, and so that would be equal to 60,000. When we integrate this, we get the natural log of this quantity times the natural log of 1,000 minus 12t divided by 1 over negative 12, negative 12, and we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 50, minus 32t evaluated from 0 to 50 as well. All right, so let's plug in the limits and see what we get. So v final is equal to 60,000 divided by 12. That's a negative 500, right? 6,000 divided by 12 is, yeah, so that would be negative 5,000, negative 5,000 times. When we plug in the upper limit, we get the natural log of 1,000 minus 50 times 12, that would be 600. Minus, when we plug in the lower limit, that we get the natural log of 1,000. And notice that this is going to be a bigger number than this, so we have a negative quantity in here multiplied by a negative quantity, which gives us a positive quantity. Uh, let's see here, that's 6,000, okay. And then we have uh, minus 32 times 50. Because we plug in the lower limit, we don't get anything at all. All right, let's calculate that and see what we get. So we have the 400, take the natural log of that, minus 1,000, take the natural log of that, and multiply it times 5,000, which is negative, equals, so it gives us v final is equal to 4,581 feet per second, but then we have to subtract from that 32 times 50, which is 1,600 feet per second, 1,600 feet per second, and so we have 4,581 minus 1,600 equals, so we have a net velocity of 2,981 feet per second. And so notice instead of 1,400 feet per second, we've reached more than, more than twice the speed by the time the fuel is burned out 50 seconds later. And of course, with all that additional speed, the rocket will go much, much higher. First of all, much higher before the, the fuel is burned out, and then it has so much speed it can go, it can continue to gain height for a while before it starts coming down. So that is a more realistic view of the V2 rocket if we take into account that it loses mass when the fuel is being burned. And that is how it's done.